I've recorded myself working on a real Ionic and Angular project to show what a professional Angular development workflow might look like. Now this is not the only way to implement a professional workflow, this is just what I like to do and it has a lot of those advanced bells and whistles like test driven development, Kanbans, CI, CD, task branching and more. To start, I pull the user story or feature I want to work on over to the test column. Ideally this feature would progress from test to code and eventually to the done column, but it doesn't always pan out that way. There are automations set up in this project to automatically pull new issues into the Kanban board and automatically move them to the done column when they're closed. I then create a new task branch for that feature, first making sure that I have the latest code changes from the main branch. The task branches are always named using my initials and the issue related to the work that is being done in the branch. So something like JM-91. Since I'm using test-driven development, the first thing I do is write a test to test what I'm about to build. I've intentionally picked out an easy feature for this video. All I'm doing is adding a button that links from my home page to another page. I'm using Cypress in my project to write end-to-end -end tests. And once I've written that test, I check that the test fails. And this is an important part of the TDD process. We first want to see that the test fails, then we want to implement the functionality to satisfy that test and then check that it passes. With an E2E test defined, I don't usually jump straight into the coding. I would write a unit test or integration test using jest for what I'm about to code. The general idea being that I would write one or many unit tests that would eventually lead to the end-to-end -end test passing. So in a typical scenario, I might have something like one end-to-end -end test and then three or four unit tests to satisfy that end-to-end -end test. But when it comes to testing simple template behavior, like a button linking to another page, I usually don't write unit tests since the end-to-end -end test already accurately covers this functionality. Now this is the part where I sort of just code like normal. It's important to remember not to implement anything outside of the scope of the test though. In this case, all I'm doing is adding a button that links to the feedback page because that is what is covered by the test. If I were to do something like perhaps run some kind of authentication check before completing that navigation, that's a scenario that would require a different test. So to check that this feature is finished, I run my end-to-end -end test again to see that it passes. And in this case, it didn't. In the test, I'm grabbing a button with a class of feedback, but I forgot to add that to the button in this case. So I make that change and I run the test again and it works. So I've just been running the test for one specific page to speed up the development process, but it is also important to run the entire end-to-end -end test suite before submitting a pull request for this code. And even though I didn't have to implement any unit tests for this feature, it is important to run those as well in case I have unintentionally broken something. That is basically the whole point of having the tests. Now you would expect these to pass in this case, but they actually don't which goes to show why you should always run them even if you think nothing has changed. Now I haven't actually broken anything here, it's just that my template is now using routing and my unit test file doesn't include the router testing module. So I'll just need to add that to get the tests working again. With all the tests passing, I can be satisfied that my feature is complete. Now I can push that feature back up to the remote repository and I'm going to switch back to the main branch. And then from the repository, I'll create a pull request from the branch I just pushed up to the main branch. Now I'm just working on this project myself, so I don't have any kind of formal review process here, but you can build that in as well. I'm just going to merge this pull request right away. And by using the closes keyword, I can automatically close the associated issue when this pull request is merged. At this point, I make sure to run a git pull from my main branch so that the main branch has these latest changes. Now, since I've committed code to the main branch, the CI builds I have set up will also run my unit and end-to-end -end tests through GitHub Actions. If there are any problems with that, I will be notified about it. 
And we can see in this case that the tests have passed. My GitHub actions will also automatically take what is committed to the main branch and build and deploy a production version to Netlify as well. And now I just repeat this process again and again and again and again. Pulling in new issues from the backlog, creating a task branch, writing tests, writing code to satisfy those tests, pushing the code back, creating a pull request and doing it all over again. Now, something that you might find interesting about this process is that since I'm writing tests, there is little need to actually serve the application and inspect it myself. I do still do this from time to time, but me manually inspecting the application is not a common part of the workflow. Even a lot of the debugging usually happens through the tests. So I have much more detailed guides on setting up and using this process. So if you're interested, make sure to check out the links in the description. And this entire project will also eventually be available as a module to pro members of EliteIonic.com. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.